Between September 2019 and March 2020, wildfires killed billions of animals and decimated more than 200,000 square kilometers of Australian forest, an area larger than the size of Nebraska. Some thousands of kilometers away in the Southern Ocean, massive algae blooms covered a surface larger than the area of Australia itself. Just how are these wildfires and ocean blooms connected? To untangle that, we look to the carbon cycle. The carbon cycle is the flow of carbon between reservoirs in the atmosphere, plants and animals, land and ocean. It's one of the key processes that keeps life sustainable on Earth. And at the heart of all this are land plants and aquatic phytoplankton. On land, most carbon is stored in forests. Here, plants absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere into their cells. With energy from the sun, plants combine carbon dioxide and water to form carbohydrates such as sugar and oxygen through photosynthesis. In this process, carbon dioxide is converted to carbon-based cellular material. Carbon stored in those plants can be transferred when animals eat the plants, the plants die and decay, or in the case of Australia, fire consumes the plants. And once again, carbon-based cellular material becomes carbon dioxide that ends up in the atmosphere. If we look to the ocean reservoir, carbon dioxide is also absorbed by phytoplankton, microscopic organisms that convert carbon dioxide, water, and sunlight into carbohydrates like sugar and oxygen through photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide released into the atmosphere eventually becomes available for aquatic photosynthesis. In general, any change that shifts carbon out of one reservoir puts more into other reservoirs. But photosynthesis also requires nutrients such as nitrogen, phosphorus, and iron. Without the right proportions of these nutrients, photosynthesis doesn't happen, which can be seen in the iron-limited parts of the ocean, such as far offshore of Australia. Atmospheric aerosols released by fires, however, contain carbon as well as other nutrients essential for plant growth, like iron. When these aerosols are deposited on the ocean's surface, these nutrients become available for photosynthesis. This iron from the Australian wildfires is now thought to have stimulated the massive Southern Ocean phytoplankton blooms, blooms of such magnitude that they converted an almost equivalent volume of carbon dioxide released by the fires into carbohydrates and cellular material. And here is why having a vantage point from space is crucial. From satellites, we can observe how the movement of carbon changes when large-scale events like wildfires occur. The connection between the Australian wildfires and Southern Ocean Bloom could not have been made without satellites. NASA's Plankton Aerosol Cloud and Ocean Ecosystem, or PACE, mission is specifically designed to better measure parts of the atmosphere and ocean connection with unprecedented resolution. PACE's instruments will shed new light on the composition and distribution of these massive mixtures of tiny aerosol particles and aquatic microorganisms. On board are two polarimeters, instruments that measure specific angles of light reflected, which, for example, allows researchers to tease apart the specific type of aerosols in these kinds of massive fire events. PACE's flagship sensor, the Ocean Color Instrument, or OCI, will cover vast swaths of the ocean, measuring concentrations of photosynthetic pigments, allowing researchers to decipher the different types of phytoplankton. With an instrument like OCI, where you're measuring this full spectrum of color, all the colors of the rainbow you can imagine, we can start teasing apart the species and the different functional groups and different communities that exist. The data from PACE will help define those communities, allowing for clearer connections within the reservoirs of the carbon cycle. These fires emitted a huge amount of carbon and other aerosols into the atmosphere, with some estimates suggesting volumes greater than Australia's annual emissions from fire and fossil fuels combined. Those aerosols contained essential nutrients that are thought to have stimulated the rapid growth of phytoplankton in the Southern Ocean. And these kinds of connections can have big impacts. It's really important to know where the carbon is going and where your food source is going. This is important for not just climate studies, but food security. The fires that tore through Australia are just one example of how Earth systems are linked in ways we're only beginning to fully understand. With data from PACE, we'll get a clearer picture of carbon as it links land use and fires, atmospheric aerosols and marine communities, and ultimately improves the data we put into climate models.